So here we are in front of the Hansa 575, our latest product. Although it's intended to be the direct successor to the Hansa 545, it represents a completely new development. The boat has got a little bigger, a little wider, and unsurprisingly a little taller. As such, the volume has increased significantly. We'll also see that in a minute in the interior shots. The length is now 16.7 meters and the width 5.2 meters. What's striking is the relative flatness of the design and the low position of the windows, ensuring that in the living area they are right where the usable space is. All in all though, it's another typical Hansa, and we have some great new features which we can shortly take a look at in more detail. So let's climb aboard now, have a walk across the deck, and I'll talk you through the new features one by one. We can then take a look below deck. A new feature on the boat in terms of the hull deck joint is the inclusion of a bulwark. We're looking at a height of 15 centimeters in the front section. In other words, the top rail is over 70 centimeters from the deck, so we can hold on nice and tight at a sensible height and also have some protection against falling over the side. At the front, we again have an underdeck furling unit installed in the bow. We also have the big anchor fitting with the teak step and at the front, the fitting for the Genneke. This is not too far away, however, and is within easy reach of someone on board. This is just the kind of combination we wanted. The anchor winch is a typical on-deck anchor winch. The anchor compartment has a chain capacity of up to 80 meters. At the front, we have two large hatches, two size 70 hatches, one for the sleeping cabin in the owner's quarters. We'll take a look at this below deck in a minute. And the front one for the skipper's cabin either a storage space with the A1 layout or as a skipper's cabin with the A2 layout. We can use the handle to open them up and climb in, which we'll do now. Here we have the wash basin for the crew, here's the cabin and there's a small toilet too. We can also open up the berth by unfolding this cushion. This creates a berth just like any other. As we can see here, the deck has been designed to be extremely flat. It's made of teak from the bulwark inwards. A small step here and a step there, creating a large overall surface area with the large flat hatches. Each of these hatches is rounded off at the front to create a nice look from the inside too and let people get a really good view of the outside. This is the new design, and these are really the only sections which are still obviously made of plastic. Here we have the fully integrated rail for the self-tacking jib. The angle is just right as it swings across like this. It's nice and flat, as well as being integrated. The water runoff passes through here, so that's the self-tacking rail. The halyards all run straight into the diverting channel without touching the deck. Five halyards on each side, all rooted towards the back. The sun deck as a whole, as we can see here, covers a large area. Everything is flush with the surface, like the six hatches for the saloon area, with forced ventilation for two hatches. And these large front hatches can be opened at the front to provide ventilation, creating a pleasant airflow in the cabin when at anchor. Again, we've got these two levels joined with teak, pretty much creating a continuous teak surface. This is an overhanging section above the windows, which means you can even open them when it's raining. No water can get in, even when it's raining. The actual stern of the boat has a lot of new features. For one thing, of course, it's really wide for the size of the boat, giving us lots of room on deck. We'll take another look in the cockpit in a second. There's also a dinghy garage below the cockpit for a small boat. This would be suitable for a 2.85 meter long Williams tender, which would be reeled in lengthwise. Now we want to show you how this dinghy garage has been designed and how it works. We've asked the man behind the technology involved, Raul Bayorat, our head of development, to show us how it works. 
We can open up the cockpit floor in the stern hatch, as he's about to show us now. He starts by opening the large cockpit hatch, which is usually done hydraulically. We can now see how the dinghy is accommodated. Now we can open the stern hatch hydraulically. It has two large hydraulic props on the right and left, which are able to take the big load involved. The special design feature with this dinghy garage is the way it can be extended lower than 90 degrees into the water. So we move down to the next level. An extra step takes us through to the dinghy garage and the platform. The swimming ladder can be folded down. It's permanently attached to the stern hatch. This is the feeder, which hooks into its own attachment here. And below, flush fitted, is the heavy duty running gear, which we will now open up. Again, a pin is used to secure it in place. So now we're all set and can pull the dinghy backwards. The winch starts up and the boat glides backwards over the rollers almost automatically. Next, the hatch is lowered again to the required angle and then the boat is in the water. Just like that. Here we have the large cockpit area, for guests for example, with its generous access. Everybody has their own table, which can be extended of course. This is great for holding on to, or it can be used for equipment, so everything is to hand. And here of course, the nice wide companionway. This table is the standard model, by the way. Another model is available, which you can lower electronically. So this entire surface becomes a sunbathing area. The same applies on the other side, of course, although they're separate from each other. So you can sunbathe here and have your breakfast over there, or have the whole area for sunbathing. This is the integrated glass pane for the aft cabin. Here we have a large hatch and again our familiar compartment where smaller items can be kept dry under the cover. And of course the same handle as at the rear. Then we have our drop board, which we can pull out just like this. Under here we have the storage area for things like fenders or the life raft. The cockpit has new seats with integrated grips and a storage area underneath. This provides a really good sitting position. Another new feature is the steering system, which now runs diagonally to the floor instead of straight down, leaving the whole cockpit floor free. This is neat and easy to keep clean and it also looks smarter. Here we have the nice big plotter on top with its 12 inch screen offering great visibility and in front the Volvo electronic controls for the machinery, a grip and of course a compass. Again, the various halyards and sheets are arranged as you would expect on a Hansa. German main sheet system on both sides, reefing lines, halyards, jib sheet, everything is here. We can operate this via the electric winch and then stow it away again here. We have a lot of storage space here, a lot of halyard volume too of course, but everything fits in nicely and drains off underneath. It's neat and the winch is nice and easy to use. We can also use the winch for the mooring lines, so each mooring line can be worked via the winch to help dock the boat. So now we go down the companionway, which is really user-friendly at the new angle, a nice gentle incline. This also combines with the sliding hatch, which makes for a very convenient companionway that you can easily go down forwards. The companionway leads direct to the large navigation area, in contact with the cockpit, and with an easy chair. You can keep it in a fixed position or swivel it around when you want to get up again. It's ideal, really. You can sit here nice and comfortably, even when the boat's tilting. 
Here we have the large writing surface for navigation purposes, with lots of room for installing additional instrumentation, as well as a really big chart table. Here is the new switch panel with a touchscreen. You can see which lights are on. Here is the main panel. There's basically lots of space. This is the lighting control system, now a familiar feature on many Hansa yachts. The ceiling lighting offers a wealth of indirect lighting options and direct LED lamps, not to mention the additional lighting in the textile panels. I'll just adjust the settings now so the lights are dimmed, and then turn them back up to full power. There's a lot of space in the entrance area. From here you come into the main saloon with the galley on the port side. The galley has a terrifically large work surface and, most importantly, windows at eye level so you get a great view of what's going on outside. Again, there are storage compartments here for stowing things away. The hob cover drops down at the back and above we have the extractor hood with additional lighting. We use the full width of the boat, with this central element creating an access area. It also means there are two areas facing each other, but still separate. In the standard version, we have a large integrated storage space here, although the central element is also used as a surface area and for holding onto, and it incorporates a large seat. This version is not simply equipped to hold a television, but there's actually a large one installed. This is a 46-inch screen, which is ideal for the seating area. It's taking its time, but there we have it. Here we are in the large saloon with its generous seating areas. This is a standard table, although there is another table available as an option, which can be lowered electrically. It can then be covered with cushions, creating a large area to lie down on and watch the television. A completely new feature is this shelf feature. It folds down to provide another non-slip surface so things stay nice and still, even when you're sailing. We've made the hatches in the floor bigger than in other Hansa models to help make the most of the storage space available. So we've got a lot of storage space here, or you can keep wine bottles down there. Down here we have the large service hatch for the various through-hull fittings you need to access. You can open this up and everything is together in one central location. You don't need to roam around the entire boat to reach the individual through-hull fittings you might need to close off. Under the floor we have two diesel tanks, each containing nearly 300 litres, which makes nearly 600 litres of diesel in total. This is the diverter for the diesel tanks. You don't need a lifting device, as there's a lifting mechanism already built in. You can access this anytime you like and quickly switch the diesel tank over from tank 1 to tank 2. So here we are in the aft cabin with its own bathroom. It has a lot of space as you enter and plenty of headroom. I can even stand up under the cockpit and again the ceiling is laminated. Nor does the well of the cockpit get in the way, even if you're sitting under it. The bed is 1.6 meters wide and over 2 meters long. And thanks to this gap, we can also make separate beds. Here is the large bathroom, with plenty of room as you enter. You can move around really easily in here. Lots of headroom with large lockers, with the wet area kept completely separate. Here we have the wet area as we enter the shower. You can close the door and splash the water around as much as you like. It doesn't matter, as everything is kept separate. Now we're at the front, in the owner's cabin of the Hansa 575. You can appreciate the space and the 2.1 meter headroom. Here you get a good impression of the indirect lighting. I'll just turn this on and off. You can get a good idea of the nice effect this creates. The same down here in the locker. You can also open this up, again creating a small storage space on each side. Then there's another really bright idea beside the bed. Here you can also fold down the padded back panel to provide another small table. 
Let's take a quick look at the new interior design on the other side, with the integrated hatches, the solid wood border and the new trim. Here too we have the embedded silver border. Here is the owner's television. It's securely attached, but it's easy enough to swivel it out. The area as a whole is really very nice. Here on the port side we have the owner's bathroom, a washing area with a toilet. There's a large mirror and the floor is easy to clean. We have a shower on the starboard side which is a really nice size. The whole thing works like a wet room. Everything can get wet as it's all made of plastic. I'll just go in. You can see just how big it is. There's plenty of room to move about. Unusually, the floor is flat, with water able to run off around the edge. The slope to drain the water is underneath, so the top here can be cleaned up nice and quickly. This means the water always runs off, with no pools left standing.